DPS meters destroyed World of Warcraft and it's all people are obsessing about nowadays. Players get kicked out of groups and guilds and they get called out. Did we all forget what made WoW special for us? We're diving deep today to see exactly how DPS meters destroyed World of Warcraft and how we can get back that special feeling that WoW had for us and why other games just don't use DPS meters. If anything, DPS meters forever changed World of Warcraft. It first of all created the concept of meta. Obviously the meta is not a concept just for WoW, but in terms of WoW, it created basically discrimination between people inviting and not inviting each other into groups and you being able to play or not play the spec. Listen, you can actually get way easier into groups by playing your spec if that spec is the meta spec. It also created guides. Funny enough, that's how we started doing World of Warcraft content. And the guides created a premise of people needing to research their spec before they can actually play because they were expected to do so, essentially taking them outside of their game and looking on websites or YouTube videos to figure out exactly how to best perform with their spec. And of course, guides are not something specific to World of Warcraft. There are guides in pretty much most competitive video games nowadays. I'm thinking Diablo 4, I'm thinking League of Legends, I'm thinking even Final Fantasy 14. I'm sure there are some guys there on how to best create your animal class. I don't know anything about Final Fantasy 14, but what I do know is that because of the guides, it essentially pushed the devs to create more complex and in-depth specs to kind of counteract the fact that the way to figure out how a spec plays and how to play better has become a little bit more transparent or a little bit easier and took away some of the discovery part that the player used to do to kind of figure out where their spec is. And that led us to having more complex specs and button bloat. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Enhancement Shaman. God damn, that's so many buttons, man. Are DPS meters even necessary? Well, in some games such as Lost Ark, DPS meters are bannable. And is, is that a good thing? Well, I don't know, but for sure, what I do know is that some games don't have DPS meters, period, like Diablo 4, and they are still very fun. Unbiased opinion. And fun is an important part because sometimes you just want to sit down, fire up your game and have some fun and not worry about min-maxing your build, spending time to find that one thing that makes you 2% better instead of just going out there and killing shit. Most people get zero added value from DPS meters because for most people it's just another source of validation. Other people will not even use DPS meters, period because why would they? They just want to pop into the game and just slay stuff and loot the stuff from the slayed stuff. Simple. Why can games just be simple? All of this hard focus on the DPS meters can create situations where players can just ignore mechanics because of DPS meters. Mechanics have become more and more complicated, not just because the DPS meters, but because of what the DPS meters created, this meta of figuring out the data on your screen more efficiently. And now everything is a lot more complicated. And because everything is more complicated and you're focused on maximizing your big dick dips, then you end up ignoring mechanics and you wipe your group, which is not not fun for anybody. This creates a pattern and a situation where people are just disconnected from the actual game whenever they're focused on their meters and how much damage they're actually doing or healing, of course. That not only takes away from the fun aspect of the game of being in the moment, but it also takes away some of the chill and some of the fun that the game can have. And that's only on the individual level because on a social level it created bad blood between people because of dps meters and people feeling the social pressure of performing they might end up pushing their cooldowns whenever they don't have to and end up potentially wiping their raid because they didn't have the damage when they needed it and created a severe lack of teamwork which is just a symptom of people's insecurity that needed to be fed through the validation of a good overall dps at the end of combat. And to further point out that DPS meters are not necessary to establish performance, to establish relevancy, to clear a content that's particularly difficult, we already have an example, a little bit of the cuff example, where Blizzard created the Proving Grounds a couple of expansions ago, where you went in a solo scenario, did something akin to what a dungeon situation would be, and you would receive a score at the end, whether it's silver or gold, and based on that score, you would be able to join or not join specific groups in terms of looking for people. 
level. Obviously, this has evolved into Dungeon Mythic Plus score, but this was a little bit less invasive, a little bit less discriminatory. And if we're going to eliminate the DPS meters completely, we can just replace them with Proving Ground. That's right, right? Well, listen, I know that you will contradict everything I said down in the comments. <sighs> but is it all bad? There are positives as well to the DPS meters being introduced because it created competitiveness. Because of the DPS meters, we now have proper enraged summers and how to beat boss enraged summers because now we know if the boss has 10 million HP and it gets the enrage in 6 minutes, we know to divide that HP by the time that we have left and we need to kind of figure out what the DPS is to kill the boss before the enrage hits. It also created the concept of obstacles to overcome by having performance being evaluated by a number and of course, it does help release some dopamine when you complete that challenge because you had really good performance often showed by the DPS meter. The best rewards and moments in WoW came after crushing content with optimized playstyles that wouldn't have been possible without the concept of DPS meters. I mean, just look at these guys crushing Ragnaros in a speed kill 16, 17, 18 years ago with 33 frost mages, a bunch of tanks and healers that's not that necessary. And this would not have been possible without DPS meters kind of telling them, okay, you need this amount of damage to get this boss done. And that's one of the cool things that you can do with the DPS meters. DPS meters help to showcase performance, to measure your skill as a player, which definitely pushes people to progress and improve as individual players every time, because it definitely helps to measure the difficulty of the content, the efficiency of your build. It helps create achievements, competition, stakes, challenges, rewards, and accomplishments. DPS meters also evolve to showcase useful data when it comes to improving, such as the healing done in a dungeon or a raid, the damage taken by the tanks, maybe you took too much damage maybe you shouldn't have, the number of interrupts, dispels to kind of figure how to deal with the mechanics and not even all of that but complex raid interactions like add swaps or damage to bosses and even buffed damage now with the augmentation spec and oh of course it also allowed for the concept of an augmentation spec to be introduced in WoW because you wouldn't be able to have that without actual DPS meters. So did the DPS meters destroy WoW? Ah, that dungeon was fun. You barely did more than the tank. How can your damage be so low? Play Candy Crush. Are you using your talent properly? Why are you even playing this? We almost missed the timer. DPS meters were likely inevitable no matter what, it just depends on which side of the fence you are. The concept of such a system is necessary because the WoW content is timed. Enraged timers, like I mentioned earlier, Mythic Plus timers, Arena dampening, all of these concepts essentially mean that you have to finish what you need to finish before a specific time is reached and when you add the concept of time related to your damage output then you will have to have some form of a DPS meter. And even if the DPS meters were necessary and inevitable, they still destroyed an important aspect of World of Warcraft, and that is the aspect of fun. Playing a video game just for fun, which of course you can still do. You can still play WoW without a DPS meters and still have fun. You can play more chill content like normal and heroic dungeons where performance, although obviously it's important, is not that crucial where a DPS meter is necessary to kind of monitor. As long as you play your class relatively well, you'll be able to crush this content. Same with LFR or looking for raid and maybe even normal raid after getting a lot of gear is content that can be done without min-maxing, without meta playing, without DPS meters, period. Ignore the chat and play how you like. Just don't play high stakes content that's super reliant on optimization where the DPS meters are pretty much expected and your social group will judge you buy it. Just have fun. Because people definitely forgot how to have fun and that's just a shame. Sure, Big Damn is really fun for some people but not always. Enjoying the game and just not getting sucked up into this world is one way to improve your WoW experience and there are more ways to improve your WoW experience and we already cover five of them in this video and I guarantee you that you will feel a lot better about logging into World of Warcraft by watching it.